Hey, this is Stone Cold Steve Austin. You're listening to Ham Radio, and that's the bottom line, because Stone Cold said so. Hey, Steve, what's going on, man? Oh, nothing, man. Just out here in Los Angeles trying to make a buck. Sweet. Uh, On the phone right now, we got Stone Cold Steve Austin, star of the brand new movie, Hunt to Kill. From our friends at Anchor Bay Entertainment. How the, how the hell is your day going, Steve? Well, it's going okay so far. I got up early this morning. I'm on uh, West Coast time talking to a lot of people on the East Coast. So I got up early. We had some technical difficulties. I'm not uh, technically a morning person, but nonetheless, <laughs> we're up and flying and doing the best we can. Oh, uh, that's for, well, at least, dude, you sound good, Steve. I, I miss you because, see, I'm a big wrestling fan. I miss your ass. I haven't even heard your voice. I, they even took you off, I believe, the beginning of Raw. I don't even know. I haven't heard from you in a while. I miss you, man. Man, I tell you what. Uh, I want to thank you for that, and I appreciate you watching. Absolutely. Uh, I've been trying to stay busy, uh, making some movies. I uh, got a chance to make, uh, you know, The Expendables with uh, 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 Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, I want to talk. From that guy. I do want to talk to you about that. How how was it breaking uh, Sly's neck? Man, I tell you what, it was just <laughs> like any other neck. <laughs> You know, it was. Uh, I think it was more of a uh, more of a process of that guy just just being so hard on his body through all the action movies he's made. He really puts uh, his body on the line when he when he does his stuff. He's a very physical guy, and the whole time we were fighting, he kept telling me, "Steve, more intensity, more intensity." And I'm thinking, man, if I get any any, any more intense, I'm going to kick this guy's ass. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but Does it? You know what? That, but that's what he wants. And I think, you know, finally when I hit him with that big tackle, I think that's what cracked that bone. But it wasn't anything that I was trying to do. He was directing me to be so intense. Things just happened. But he wanted a, a realistic fight, and he got it. Damn right. I freaking broke a neck out of the deal. Jesus Christ. Um, I don't even know where to begin because you're such a freaking giant icon in the wrestling industry, especially to us here on the show, because you – a lot of people, a lot of people are going to tag you with this, but you're the guy that, to me, in 1997, ushered in the Attitude Era in the WWE. You're the guy. Without you, you know, doing the finger, drinking some beer, kicking people, stunning, doing all the damn thing, the BMF walk, Austin all 316, that, Austin 316. Without doing any of that shit, we don't have the Attitude Era, and we don't have the era in the WWE that everyone loves. So first off, I'm going to say thank you for that. That's number one. Number two. What do you think of the product now? Well, first of all, let me let me cover the attitude era thing. Yeah. You know, it, it was it's funny because you know that that era got labeled as the attitude era, uh, but I always thought that professional wrestlers always had attitude, and it was but it was more coming from the the heel side of the game because uh, it's, it was it's you know to me you, you can have a lot more swagger and you don't have to walk such a thin line as being a babyface. But, but pro wrestlers have always had attitude. But anyway, when I turned it up and when they finally put a microphone in front of my face and they let me take, start talking and Vince start, stopped editing my lines and I came up with the Stone Cold Steve Austin name and things started flying and I just started talking all of the, the trash that I grew up, you know, listening to in South Texas and in the environment that I was brought in and a, a hunting background and outdoors and sports. Man, it was just an absolute blast, and it's kind of like you know when people talk about oh the the the, the hair the hair metal bands or the hair bands yeah and uh, or the grunge the grunge bands and now it's the Attitude Era, but nonetheless if that's what it is that's what it that's what it is, and I had a damn fun time doing <laughs> that. And, and today's world, they they changed over to a PG product. I got no problem with the PG product, but man, I tell you what. Your, your, your storylines, your championship storylines, your angles still have to be serious. You can't have too much. Uh, you can have humor, but you can't. Comedy doesn't equate to drawing big money. You can have humor applied and mixed in there at a ratio, but, man, when I grew up changing channels back in South Texas and I was seven or eight years old, Hell yeah. I, saw a, I saw a smoke-filled arena. It was Houston Wrestling, Paul Bosch's promotion. It was a smoke-filled arena, two guys in a ring. I don't remember who the two guys were. <laughs> And there was a rope around the audience, keeping them, keeping them out. You could only see about the first or second row of people. It was very dark, and man, that was just a mystique. And it was, you know, it was it was you know that was back when wrestling was real, right? Yeah. 
And I fell in love with that product. And I know in the world of, uh, you know, how smart everybody is now, but it still has to be presented as real. And uh, That's man, the problem, Steve. Steve. Steve Austin could not exist in the PG world. Absolutely. I tried to, to host that Raw in San Diego, and I had so many, so many restrictions on me that night. It was really hard to get off and try to, try to really even get the promo out, knowing I couldn't say this, that, or whatever. Uh, now, wait, Steve. I'll tell you, I, I'm proud of what I did, but I don't think I could thrive and could I? I could go back right now and be a number one guy. Yeah, well, that in that environment with a PG handcuff would be hard to do. No, absolutely, because that's what's bringing me to this next point right now. Because a lot of the freaking gossip mongers and all the bullshit, the dirt sheets and everything else, is now saying that your ass is actually going to appear on Raw. I believe it's like the 25th or something, the 26th, 27th, whatever the 27th hell it is, of 27th December. of the December, and now. If you can't exist in that environment, if you if we can't have the Austin that the audience wants, why are you going to do it? Are you even locked in to do it? No, no, you know, and that's the thing. Uh, it wasn't that I was opposed to doing it, but I never. No one even told it to me. I always it started off as an internet rumor. Yeah. And I'm fixing to go start making a movie in Vancouver, and then when I finish uh, in early December, I'm getting in my RV and I'm driving. Uh, the family, the dogs, down to my ranch in South Texas. I'm going to hunt for a month and then go make another movie. So Good boy. Man, nobody, no, nobody said a, a word to me, so it's news to me. Well, that's what I'm saying. They're hyping in on all these other shows. I mean, I, I like, I'll like, i fucking I'll throw it out there because I don't give a shit about, you know, the same way that you're a badass, I'm a kind of badass in the radio business. I don't give a shit. I'll mention other shows. On Stern, they're hyping the fact that Jeff the Drunk and Austin are going to meet up. And like, the, and and, and, is the, I, I, and your side saying no? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I heard about the Jeff the drunk guy. I'm thinking, man, what, what are you talking about? I don't. Uh, and believe me, I'm shooting straight with you. Well, no, I no, I know. Rumors. I know. I know nothing of the rumors, and certainly nobody from WWE has, has contacted me about that. I mean, it, man, when I go down and start my deer hunting process in Texas. Man, you'd have to run me off my ranch with a bunch of rifles. Guys. Fuck you! Yeah. That's just like me. I'm going. There. I'm going deer hunting in a couple of weeks, Steve. Big game. Ten pointers. Yeah, where, where you at? Uh, right up in uh, Monticello, New York, and upstate oh, New York. Is that, that, that going to be uh, bow only or black powder? Uh, no, no, it's rifle and shotgun too. Uh, bow season I'm opens up a week earlier. Yeah, bow season opens up a week earlier. Okay, uh, so then are you a rifle hunter? Yes, I'm a rifle hunter. Uh, what caliber? Uh, I use a thirty thirty. This is the fucking manly show we have now. What's your what's your average shot there? Under a hundred yards. Damn. Yeah, it's uh yeah about a little under a hundred yards. Yeah, twins a dead eye man. This kid could shoot, dude. Oh yeah. Yeah, he's a little. He could shoot the fly fucking wings of a fly. I swear, he got twenty paces. He's fucking. He's crazy with the guns, dude. It's, it's really it's scary, quite frankly, because the gun's bigger than him. It's fucking scary. <laughs> Uh, uh, the 3030 is one of the most popular uh, deer cartridges of all time. Yeah. But, uh, you know, a lot of people uh, use so much gun, and, and really the, the average shot, and you can take some long Sendero shots in Texas. I'm not a long shot guy because I want on my ranch I want to try to age my deer and make sure that I'm shooting a mature deer. But some people that take the three, four, five, six hundred 600-yard shots, and eh, I'm not so much a fan of that. you got to be able to age that deer. And I know so many people use a, a gun that's way too much. Thirty thirty is perfect cartridge. The, the I use an Uzi. Shot, probably across the United States, is under a hundred yards. Right. I just clear right. it out. Right. right, Steve. All right, Steve. Speaking of hunting. All right. So speaking of hunting, since we gotta get, we gotta finish this up. I know you're a very busy man. I know you do a lot of busy shit. Um, talk to me about Hunt to Kill really quick. Tell me about the movie. Tell me about what's going on. Man, in this movie, I play a border patrol agent, and my daughter is kidnapped by a band of criminals. Uh, and I'm forced to guide them through the mountains uh, to, to find the partner that screwed them out of the money. So in this process, you know, I'm a, basically a, a divorcee trying to raise a teenage daughter or a rebellious teenage daughter on my own. She doesn't really know me. I don't really know her. And, uh, you know, once I go from offense to defense and trying to hunt these some bitches down, uh, then she starts relying on some of the survival skills that I taught her. And uh, we turn the tables on them, and that's when all the, the, the killing and the bloodshed and the fighting happens, and that's probably my favorite act of the movie. Did you break anybody's uh, neck in this movie? We filmed this, uh, we filmed this movie outdoors. Uh, I'm using a bow in it. I'm using uh, some other stuff, and I grew up doing all that stuff. So basically the, the, written was mo the movie was totally written for me. That's what I'm saying. So this is kind of basic. If, if Steve Austin was thrown out there in the same scenario, Steve Austin, if, this, if that guy throws him out there, 
Did, now, does this happen to you fucking kick the shit out of everyone with, like, freaking knives and bowie knives and some goddamn bows and some shotguns? What do you do? Oh, yeah, yeah. I just uh, yeah, open up and, uh, you know, I, I make a few things, uh, break out. Well, I don't want to give too much away, but uh, <laughs> we, we roll up a body count anyway. Nice. Now, see, that's a good movie. That's what the, that's what we that need nowadays. Out of, out, of the, uh, out of the movies that I made on, on the, uh, excluding the, exp the Expendables, I would say this is my favorite movie that I've made. It was written for me. It's tailored to me. It wasn't a stretch for me to play the role, and I had a lot of fun doing it. All right, so the movie comes out. It came out, sorry, Tuesday, November 9th. It came out at the beginning of the week. I got my copy right now. I'm going to watch it probably later tonight after the show. That's what I'm going to do. Steve, what, are you ever going to be in the, new, the Northeast area? Because I'm inviting you right now to come up to the damn studio. You know what? I, I, if I get a chance, I'll stop by. I don't know when I'll be back out in that neck of the woods. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. You and Battery Boy over here are gonna shoot some guns off. That's what we'll do. We'll get some. We'll get some guns. We'll get some. We'll get one of our interns and dress them up like a ten point deer. Send them out there, and then what you do, you can just puck them off. <laughs> that, I like that. I think it'll work for Steve. Okay, you got it. All right, man. Thank you, Stone Cold Steve Austin, live on the phone. Go check out the movie Hunt to Kill. It's on DVD now so go rent it do whatever the hell you gotta do or he's gonna come over there and stun your ass steve give me a hell yeah please oh hell yeah, yeah that's right stone cold steve austin motherfuckers ham radio the machine uncle eddie you are a scumbag so. you are a scumbag so. billy nicknames what the fuck is wrong with you man I, I can't trust anybody. Battery boy. Then you suck at your job. Then you suck at your fucking job. This is Ham Radio on Goom Radio. You didn't say any of that. You're, you're, you're a liar. Oh my god, we need to play this you. fucking scumbag. What the hell is wrong with you all? Yeah, all I know is I told friends months ago, I said, I got a friend in radio, man. This guy's got his own show. I don't have to worry about a thing. I'm going to be on any show all the time. <laughs> You guys are sick. This is the sickest damn radio show I've ever seen. This is Ham Radio, fighting the war against the purification of America. Because who needs that shit? Just, Just freaking, freaking Thursdays. Thursdays. Catch the Ham Radio Show every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, live on The Machine. The Machine.